So a recent review made by Screen Rant for the game Black Myth Wukong caused a bit of an uproar, shall we say? So let's go over the article and see what the uproar all about and what did the article say and what's happening in here, shall we? This is an imaginary opening theme song, theme song, oh. Black Myth Wukong review. The Souls-like action hype train is a little off rails so to say apparently and by the way they did change the name here for safety reasons before it was someone's name here when they published this one day ago but for safety reasons for the author that made the review they decided to switch it to a screen round team which you know okay sure you can do whatever you want right so this is the part that a lot of people pointed out right like the pros and cons so for pros they have combat is fluid and fun as cinematography can be breathtaking at times, great diversity in items and mechanics, and the cons is game performance is unpolished, uh, lacking in inclusivity and diversity, gameplay becomes repetitive over time. So this article is kind of like there's some positives in it in a little way to the game. It says it has achieved high amounts of detail and beauty in the mundane, as well as the vast landscapes, but then it always goes to like, oh, negative right here. These fatal flaws consist of frequent stuttering, severe lag, decent audio, and terrible frame rate. Aside from the frustrating amount of stuttering, the frequent cutting of audio also heavily impacts your experience, especially during boss fights if you're relying on audio cues. So I feel like this article mostly, you know, says something maybe sort of positive about the game and then a paragraph or two under it. It's like, uh, by the way, yeah, this game is terrible because of yada 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 reasons. So this is an interesting way to even write an article, I would say, but sure. So let's talk about this concern about the game right it says you know maybe people won't be able to uh run the game and stuff and might have tr problems with lagging and stuff right but the game developers on steam you know ga game science on august 13 they did release black myth wukong benchmark tool so you can actually you know use that to see if your pc can or can't handle this game and then combat is engaging and addictive but then it will later you know like say that the boss fights are like no 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 they say Say that the environment is pretty good right but this says there's uh, interactive limitations and then it's all like the environment makes it far more tedious to get to certain bosses but i mean if the environment isn't too big then wouldn't it be easier to get to bosses and then it says like boss arenas are equally shallow and then they don't really like the choices for the environment the encounters are thrilling but repetitive it's not very forgiving experience to find a great setting uh, you know so this is kind of like praising the boss and then it's kind of like saying wukong is kind of easy <laughs> in the, like a souls like game perspective right because it, says it will allow you to learn the ropes before events these much harder ones that truly showcase what it's like to go against the boss that severely punishes you for a single wrong move made although to be fair like i think the people that made this game never you know said it was going to be exactly like a souls like game it's going to like have maybe the feel of a souls like game but it's not going to be exactly like a souls like game either so again this is just a question mark you know okay now let's get to this part okay this one's all like largely lacks inclusion and representation okay so this is the part where lack diversity i don't know why you felt the name to say this specifically but they wrote playing as a female gamer allowed me to notice issues surrounding inclusion and representation as far as chapters one and two while characters are clearly fictitious and fantastical creatures there were no female or feminine npcs enemies or bosses present the only exception if you can call it female is a boss name Mother of Stones in Chapter 2, which is nothing more than a still glowing rock with no abilities being guarded by other enemies, which this is the Mother of Stones, by the way. The lack of diversity and inclusivity resonates with the misogynistic comments reporters who have been made by developers, which express disdain for women playing their games. When you say they have the same for women, what exactly are you trying to point out to? Is there like a dialogue? that says something about them? Is there like, you know, writing in the game that's also like females are bad and yada 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 something? Although Black Myth Wukong does have truly enjoyable moments, the underlying feeling that women aren't welcome in this world felt 
present throughout my gameplay experience. I mean, I don't know why you thought this was a good idea to, to include this, especially because there was a lot of discourse regarding Black Myth who calls developers' rights, but a lot of the stuff that was being said about them apparently were due to because people fake translations of what they were saying, and then they were just ran with that. This is not a really good thing to, for you to add here to make a point. And then they go on to say, it's worth noting the game is based on the novel Journey to the West, which just consists of a few important female characters. To not include any women or to only include a few in an adaptation meant for a modern audience is quite disconcerting. If you wanted to make your point a little bit more understandable, right? When you say a few important female characters, and maybe you could have given some examples to the name of the female characters, perhaps. See who you think should have been in the game, that maybe that would give a bit more weight to your statement. Just a suggestion. Uh, while this doesn't take away from the exhilaration and fun of boss fights themselves, women fans of Souls-like games may have a different perspective, especially given that according to reports, the developer also suggested that women are incapable of enjoying or being skilled at these types of games. The irony behind the sentiment is that Black Myth of Kong was among the easiest souls like games and may have overestimated its ability to hang with them in terms of difficulty. While thematically and stylistically it undoubtedly falls under this category, it does not quite fit the bill in the technical skills required, such as is achieved by games like Elden Ring, Sekiro, Shadows, Die, Twice, and many more. Although, Ironically, Elden Ring is supposed to be an easier Souls-like game, so you're saying Wukong is even easier than Elden Ring. And then it, go it gives them a 3 out of 5, very good, but despite its flaws, worth trying, you know? Like, I, I said all this, but yeah, it's, um, you could try it, sure. I don't think this person really enjoyed this game as a game, so they're just trying to find something for the sake of finding something. Perhaps they could have asked someone else to write this review. It's not like... Green Rat was always against Wukong as well in the first place. Like, they had other articles. Like, see, this one was made four years ago, and they were all like, Wukong boss battle looks even more incredible in 4K. And then they're praising the game. And then there's also this one where, you know, they talk about what Wukong is all about and stuff like that, and what it's going to be based on, and who was the old man and stuff, what's it about, and so it gives you a, like a brief overview of what the game is supposed to be and stuff like that, right? And it doesn't really give a, a negative feel to it or anything like that. So let's talk about Journey to the West, which is a novel that Black Myth Wukong is, uh, you know, referencing shall we say. It's a Chinese mythology about Sun Wukong, also known as the Monkey King, and he's a trickster god, and then he plays a certain role in the novel, right? And then he is a blessed with unmatched superhuman strength and the ability to transform into 72 different animals and objects, and in the game Wukong apparently does transform to a few different forms. And then we get a little bit more information about what he is about and all that, right? How his life was, how did he become? And then let's go here, okay? So for uh, 500 years, this is the journey to the west part, Wukong lay immobilized beneath the weight of Buddha's mountain. Eventually, a traveling monk named Tang Sanzang found the monkey king and offered to release him on the condition that he would repent and become the monk's disciple. At first, the monkey king rejected the monk's offer. Sun Wukong plays servant uh, to no one, least of all a human. After Tang started to walk away, however, Wukong quickly changed his mind. I mean, if you're gonna be stuck for 500 years in the same place, yeah, it's probably a good thing to change your mind, you know. He would gladly serve the monkey in exchange for his release. Before Tang freed Wukong, the goddess of mercy, uh, Guan Yin, sorry if I'm mispronouncing the names by the way, uh, gave the monk a magical band that granted him control over the monkey king. After being freed from the weight of the mountain, Sun Wukong joined Tang's other demonic traveling companions. Piggy and Sandy, which again, these are not female at all. The Goddess of Mercy, you know, is a female, sure. It's in the name Goddess, so maybe they wanted to see the Goddess in the game as like a boss you have to defeat or something. Most of the time, as far as I've seen, uh, you know, when people talk about a journey to the West, as far as Wukong is evolved, they're always talking about like there's Wukong, then there's the traveling companions he's with. So it's more like of a, you know, the boys going out to do adventures and stuff kind of vibe anyways, right? I did find that there are female characters in Journey to the West, but again, if they wanted to make their point about there being no characters, they could have 
at least you know give some kind of examples here within the article of who they wanted to see and stuff like that also some of the gripes that were said here and within this uh review it just reminds me of the back in the day when people would always say you know like females can't possibly be playing games right like there's no such thing as a female gamer, oh no, you know, type of mindset. But here's the thing, even if people are saying that kind of mindset, the people that were able to play games that were female did not care at all, okay? Like, you could ask someone, what is your favorite game? And they don't necessarily have to say that, oh, it was a game that had a female protagonist. No, they could possibly say... Oh, The Witcher is my favorite game, you know, and there you play as a male protagonist, you play as a Witcher. And also there's a lot of guys that if you ask if they ever liked the Tomb Raider games, which you play as a female protagonist, they'd be all like, yeah, that was great. I feel like a lot of the times people just keep focusing on what there should be in the game. There's a checklist in their mind that if like a game developer does not, you know, check it for them, they just instantly say no 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 this is bad this is bad and stuff like that but you cannot cater to everyone that is an impossible thing to do because there's so much noise regarding so much things all the time like that is an impossible thing to achieve and you should not try to achieve that in the first place just put out there what you're going to put out there and then see how people react to it correspond to it and stuff like that if you think there's gonna be no one playing this game on like the female side i highly doubt that but it's not like you necessarily had to add a female character in order for them to be interested in this right like for instance maybe people really like the story of journey to the west and they were just want to check out the game like the way i knew about wukong was from league of legends i knew he had a staff and then he was able to play tricks on you and stuff like that right so i think there would have been like a much bigger discourse if there was wukong this game had like no staff whatsoever i don't know unless someone can point out that in the game itself there's a lot of dialogue that like is very harsh on females and stuff like that i don't necessarily think just because there's no female characters doesn't mean you know they're against females is a valid point to have it's just very bizarre the way this review was written and like the perspectives and stuff like that it's very confusing to me so let's watch the trailer for the game right you guys can overall tell me what you think about it A lot of people do praise like the environment, right? It looks very big and you know there's a lot of hidden details in it and stuff like that. And it does look, you know, like a cool place to be. With a lot of stuff to see. But it might all look tree <laughs> clapping at us. Oh, thank you, tree. Thank you. And then there's the statues. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I think if they were actually, you know, against people, maybe they wouldn't have included these. Per se, but we'll see. Yeah, I doubt I can <laughs> run this game, honestly, and what I have, but, you know, maybe one day I'll be able to play it. It does look, you know, pretty interesting. And then you get to shrink the staff. Yeah, and then there's some fire. Ooh, look at the fire. And then there's fighting against enemies. Ooh, that's a long, tall boy indeed. And then you get to be able to use your skills a bit differently, it seems. Oh no, people got caught in webs. Ah! Ah yeah, so we've got to relax and fish. I mean, it would be a cool place to fish at, though. You know, it looks very nice and icy. Although it seems like there might be something lurking. Ooh. And then you get the flaming stuff and then all that stuff. Uh-huh. And then the mask dude, of course. 
Of course. There's always gotta be some shifty mask wearing person. <laughs> or are they shifty? Who knows? And then we also apparently see so have the, this character. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't interact with them that much, right? Again, it's much worse if when you play a game, you feel like something was like very forced, right? And doesn't make any sense to any kind of dialogue or anything, which makes it weirder. Like, it seems like there's a lot of different kind of bosses here and stuff like that, so... Again, like... I mean, the game is more about just, you know, Wukong just going around and fighting enemies and all that, so... I don't know, when I saw the title for the game, right, what I expected from it would be, you know, just Wukong going around and fighting a bunch of bosses, which it, it seems that is what he's doing, so... You know? And look at the blood right ooh, ooh. Oh no. The nails. Uh. And then you go around and open up stuff. And then there's a tree. And roots brought them. There's a stone dude. There's a lot of spiders. A uh, scorpion and then. Like, from what we've seen with the trailer, right, it seems like they did add a lot of stuff into the game. There's a lot of things to see. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that the uh, review had some kind of point to it? Uh, maybe they had no point to it? Who knows? What are your thoughts about all this situation? Would you play this game yourself or are you going to just wait until you see other people play it? Or will you at least go and try and maybe test it out with the uh, tool they gave in us to see if you can't even run this game or not? Because it is a pretty big game, you know, and it's like, what, it's 130 gigabyte storage? But yeah, aside from that, let me know what you guys thought about all this situation. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye bye for now.